Okay, recognize when the power, uh, power rule is valid and apply it to derive faster. So, last time we were deriving, we were using first principle. That sucks. It takes forever. No one wants to do that if they can avoid it. So, there's quicker ways of doing things, but with great power comes great responsibility. Every time you have to take a shortcut, there's got to be something that you're going to be watching out for, otherwise it wouldn't be called a shortcut. So, first of all, we're going to use the uh, power rule blindly, and then we're going to run through when it won't work. So, first things first, what is the power rule? Okay, if you have some function, which is a times x to the power of n, just x to the n, not the a to the power of n, so something times x to some power, when you take the derivative of that, you're going to end up with n times a times x to the n minus 1. Easiest way that most people remember this is you take the power, bring it down the front, and when you do so, the power reduces by 1. So, we've got a whole bunch of uh, little examples here. We'll go through bit by bit. Cool, I've got a function, 3x to the 6. Okay, so I'm applying the power rule, bring the power down the front. Okay, so my derivative... Bring the power down the front, 6, multiply 3, multiply x, the power goes down by 1. Cool. Well, 6 by 3 by this, I can simplify, so I get 18, x to the 5, done. That easy, no h's, no make things go to 0, no factorising, nothing. Super fast and easy. Beautiful. Alright, well, let's go this. Notice now I've got f, g and h, so this is now g prime, because that's what I'm deriving. Cool, okay. Bring the power down the front, so I've got 8 times negative 5 times x, great, uh, and that comes down one power, so a 7. Beautiful. Okay, simplify, x to the 7, that easy. These become very tedious and boring very quickly, so here's something a little bit different. Okay, I've got a fraction. Well, a fraction's still a number, so that's okay. Bring the power down the front, so 2, multiplied by 3 on 4, by x to the drops by one power. I'm going to write a one just to notify to myself that yeah, I've thought about this. It's definitely a one. Cool. What's that? Well, two by this, I get six on four. That's just an x. Great. But I can simplify that, so I get three on two x. Beautiful. Done. Happy. Boring. Okay. Well, what if we have some monstrosity like this instead? Hmm. All right. There is something super convenient about this. So long as you have uh, a function made up of the addition or subtraction of multiple other functions, like we do here, we've got one function plus another function minus another function minus another function plus another function. So long as all of that just has pluses and minuses and each individual piece fits that rule, we can do each bit individually. So, going through bit by bit. This guy, we take a look at it, great, all right, f prime of x is 10 comes down the front, multiplies by the negative 2 to give negative 20. Power comes down by 1. Great. Plus, this comes up onto that, so I've got 8 on 7, power drops by 1. This multiplies onto this, we'll worry about simplifying last because we've already got a chunky boy. So, 20 on 6. Great. Now, here we get a little tricky guy. Hmm, there is no power here seemingly to drop down. What is that? Well, how many powers is actually here? Well, it's implying that this is x to the power of 1. Alright, well then that's the same as 1 times 9, which is just 9, and then I can think of this as becoming x to the power of 0. We'll leave that there for now. Cool. Plus 3. Well, hang on, that doesn't even have an x. How do I run this if I don't even have an x? Well, if we think about this, 3 is the same as 3 times 1, and I can say that this is the same as x to the power of 0, because x to the 0 is 1, as long as x is not 0, and you get all those sorts of ugly errors. Cool. Alright, well, I can bring that down, so that I get 0 times 3, which is 0, and then, oh, I've got a minus 1 off this. That might make life difficult, because that makes it x to the negative 1. Oh, I wasn't expecting something like that, but let's see how we go in the next line before we get too worried about it. Alright, this thing, great, that's just that, don't have to simplify anything. This guy, you could change it into a mixed number, but don't. Just leave it as um, improper, because life is always easier with improper. Minus, oh, this thing I can actually simplify. So we've got 10 on 3, x to the 3, <coughs> excuse me. Cool, minus, now, this green guy, x to the 0. What's x to the 0? Well, that's just 1. So this is the same as 9 times 1, 
So that's just nine. Beautiful. This guy, well, I've got this, okay, which I could change onto one on X or do something with, but it's zero times that anyway. So I could say plus zero, or better yet, why am I saying plus zero? What's the point? It doesn't do anything. So I don't even need to worry about it. Cool, everything's simplified, so the derivative of this guy is this guy. And even though it started ugly, ended ugly, it's actually surprisingly short and easy to deal with. Great. So this rule is a fantastic, nice, short, easy rule. But, as I said before, it's a shortcut, so that means you're going to have some troubles. Alright, well, what can we do and what can't we do? Alright, if I just gave you 3, would you be able to derive that? Well, yeah, because I can treat this as an x to the 0 here, and then I know what to do with it. So, yeah, that's totally fine. We can derive that just okay. Uh, incidentally, we get 0. So regardless of what this number is, if you have a constant and you derive it, you're always going to get 0. Right. Uh, f of x equals this, great, well that's just one of these guys, that's nice and boring because I've got an a and I've got an n. Okay, that's fine, so f prime of x would equal, bring the 4 down, we get negative 8x to the 3. Nice and boring. Cool. Can we do this? Well, it's got a fraction, but the fraction's still a number, so that's fine. This is a negative um, uh, power, okay, but that's still a number, so that's actually fine as well. So this will work, and this actually ends up being 17c, um, but it does work. Uh, so you don't have to do 17c yet if you don't want, but you are welcome to have a crack at it. You'll probably be able to do it, it's not a great uh, jump away. So we've got negative 10 on 3, x to the negative 6, keep in mind we're going down, and negative 5 go further into the negative. Great. But well, what about this guy? Hmm. Well hang on, now I'm dividing by x, that's a bit weird. Well. On the face of it, it looks like we can't, but we can fiddle with this slightly. And again, this is out of 17c, so you don't really need to follow this as yet, but that's the same as that, because dividing by x is the same as times by x to the neg 1. And now we've got it in a, a way that we're used to. Great, so I actually can deal with this. Cool. Bring the negative down, that's negative 4x, negative 1 minus 1, negative 2. Incidentally, we could rewrite these as well as that. Cool. Okay. Hmm. What about that? Well, square roots. That's totally different. I don't have anything to do with square roots in this. Can I re-represent that some other way? Well, yeah, we can. We can say x to the half is the same as this. Oh, okay. So, it looks like we can deal with this, as long as we're careful about it. Uh, f prime of x. Cool, bring the power down, so we've got a half, minus 1 from this becomes a negative a half, and then we just tidy up. Beautiful. Again, if you're not following this just yet, it doesn't matter that much. Um, so long as the first three make perfect sense, that's what we're caring about so far, but just for the sake of completeness, for people asking questions later. Now we get into things that are getting a bit more fiddly. So I've got this. Hmm. Well, now I've got this function, but then all of that's to a power. If it was just an x to a power, that's fine. x to a power fine, x to the power fine. This is a bit weird, but that's equivalent to x to the power, x to a power. This isn't just x to a power, I've got multiple things all getting to the power of 4 at once. So I can't do this one, at least not straight away. If you wanted to, you could expand these brackets out, and then eventually you'd have some really long expression, and then you could uh, derive it because you'd have something plus something plus something plus something and you can derive them each individually. But as it sits currently, no, can't do that. All right. What about this? I've got one function multiplied by another function. And it's tempting to think, oh, okay, I'll derive this one and then separately derive this one and then multiply those two results together. Turns out, no, life ain't that easy. So, no, if you've got a function multiplied by another function, don't touch it with power rule. Cool, what about a function divided by a function? So, same story. If you have a function involving another function, can't touch it. For future reference, this thing you're going to need what's called chain rule, this thing you're going to need what's called product rule, and this thing you'll need what's called quotient rule. But we won't touch that for a little while yet. Um, you will get to the point where you'll just happily chop and change between these. But for now, we just have to be able to do power rule in basic scenarios. You can keep going a little bit further if you want to do 17c 
um, as well. But these we're not touching for a little bit yet. Hopefully that's nice and clear. So 17B is what we're after. If you get troubled by anything, do send us an, an email. Otherwise, best of luck. Enjoy the week.